Hello everyone, my name is Carl, and today I will be talking about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now there's a couple reasons why I picked this game to be the first one that I reviewed in my retrospective review series. One, because uh, it's kind of an easy game to review. If you've ever played it all the way through, you probably know what kind of grade I'm going to give it at the end. Um, and the other reason was it was the first game that I played for the Switch. Indeed, it was released uh, March 3rd, 2017th by Nintendo as one of the launch titles for the Switch. It was also released uh, that same day for the Wii U as the last game Nintendo published for it. Um, I will be reviewing the Switch version because uh, that's the one I played, and quite frankly, I don't think anyone cares about the Wii U version. Um, it is the sixth mainline 3D Zelda game uh, coming after Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. Uh, it has a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $60 and is rated E10 Plus for fantasy violence, mild suggestive themes, and use of alcohol. Tisk tisk. Um, in it, you start the game out. Uh, Link wakes up from stasis. Uh, he's in some weird stasis chamber. He, uh, his eyes open. He leaves. He finds some uh, tattered clothes in some nearby treasure chest. He leaves the cave, and he sees the wide expanse of Hyrule uh, spread out before him. And in the distance, there is Hyrule Castle. It's surrounded by this evil purple aura. Doesn't look good. He quickly learns from an old man uh, that a hundred years prior, the Calamity Ganon uh, struck out against Hyrule Castle, um, overtook the castle, sent uh, ancient technology robots out to destroy a lot of the villages and kill a lot of the people around, and he currently has hold of the uh, castle itself, whereas Zelda is trying to seal him in that castle to this day. Um, and he has to go fix that. So he's told to head out to Kakariko Village, where he learns a bit more of the history of what's going on, and then after that, uh, you're set on your way. And Link has to set out to find the four divine beasts, which are basically super weapons, and they're the four main dungeons of the game, uh, and take them back from the Calamity Ganon so that he can use their power to destroy Ganon once and for all. Um, Breath of the Wild was seen as a departure from the series. I mean, the, one of the, the most obvious ones, you can see he's wearing a blue tunic instead of his typical green one. He's got no hat in this picture. Um, a lot of the the typical conventions of the series were changed. It was It's an open world game. There's no classic items progression system. There's no you get the hook shot so you can get to this thing, so you can get the hammer, which lets you get to this dungeon. None of that. No dungeon order. You can do them in any order you want. There's cooking. There's hunting. Uh, your main weapons all break relatively readily. Uh, so it, it was seen as a big departure from the regular conventions of The Legend of Zelda. Uh, full disclaimer, my history with the franchise, I absolutely love The uh, Legend of Zelda. I think that in terms of consistently good game franchises, it is the best, if not one of the best. Um, I was really excited to play this game because I had purchased my own Switch. It wasn't like a family one. It was mine. Uh, it had been getting rave reviews. So as soon as I got my hands on a Switch, I popped this on and... Uh, was really excited to play it. So into the actual meat of the review. Gameplay-wise, like I said before, this was seen as a departure from uh, the normal uh, Legend of Zelda gameplay. But it wasn't a departure just to be cool, just to be different, just as a marketing campaign. Uh, it's, it's a departure because this game is an open-world survival game. It's not so much the, you know, sword and shield puzzle-solving action-adventure of past games, although it is it does have those elements but this really at its heart is is a game centered around exploration and secondarily survival um, th this game does everything to, to emphasize those points uh, there is everything every nook and cranny you can possibly uh, find in Hyrule has something, there are 900 Koroks to find, 120 small shrines which are like mini dungeons to complete um, there's weapons everywhere, there's collectibles, there's uh, 
hidden, uh, literal hidden gems. You can get uh, rubies, sapphires, whatnot. There's shields, bows, swords, spears, axes, tons of enemies, tons of treasure. Uh, this game really makes you want to explore, and it rewards you for it. I remember at the start of the game, one of the things that I really wanted to do after beating the first dungeon was just fill out the entire map. Um, you go and find Sheikah Towers, and once you go to the Sheikah Tower, it will um, put in your Sheikah Slate, which is essentially a smartphone, um, part of the map. And that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to explore and say, okay, I want to go there. Because you can. You can go everywhere. Other open world games have like some restrictions on them, typically. Um, either the open world is like full of, of fluff, if you will, where, yeah, it's big, but like in between the important points, there's just empty streets. Um, or the objectives are kind of in this set order, and you have to unlock bits of different parts of the map. With Breath of the Wild, that doesn't happen. Um, you basically start out on a great plateau. The game will, you know, if you fall off the plateau, the game will say, okay, no, uh, you're back on, you lose a heart or whatever. Um, you get the ability to uh, make remote bombs, move metal objects, make pillars of ice on water, and temporarily freeze objects in time. They give you those. Uh, they give you, say, they say, go to Kakariko Village, and they say, go. That's it. There is really no, there's no other restriction on where you can go and what you can do. Uh, I remember thinking that I had to go to Kakariko Village, and then after I left Kakariko Village, I you know, ran into one of the Divine Beast dungeons, and I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then, and then it opened up. But I, I looked back and I realized, as soon as you leave that Great Plateau, you can run to Hyrule Castle and you can challenge Ganon. Immediately, if you really wanted to. If you're good enough to get past all the enemies, and if you're good enough to beat Ganon, theoretically, you can leave the Great Plateau, go get Ganon. Immediately. And that is amazing, I think. It's going to be really hard, but you can you can fight them immediately. There's no gate or anything that says, oh, you need to have the four divine beasts, or you need to have this many hearts. No, it just says go. Um, also, interestingly... It's like a, a survival game almost. I mean, it's called Breath of the Wild for a reason. Uh, one of the biggest parts of this game is navigating the wild, the nature. Um, and you can cook, you can hunt, uh, you know, you can, you can kill animals, take their meat, cook it up. You can find a whole bunch of different weapons. Um, the heart system, and typically in other games, like people would... would a really strong enemy would do one heart at the most. In this game, you can have someone, you know, a strong enemy destroy like 10 hearts a pop. Um, but to combat that, you can wear armor. You can have food to heal a lot of hearts really quickly. So hearts are easy come, easy go. And along those lines, if you mess up, you can die very easily. And that's why it's like a survival game. Uh, in other Zelda games, you know, if there's a camp of enemies, you just run in and you... You uh, uh, rely on your skills to just, just to kill all the enemies. But in Breath of the Wild, if there's a camp of enemies, you want to be creative of how to do it. You want to maybe uh, push a boulder down, uh, down the hill. You might want to shoot a candle down onto an explosive barrel. You might want to use Magnesis to move a metal crate and throw it into your enemies. You might want to throw a bomb to distract them. You might want to uh, use stasis on on one of the lookouts so they don't alert everybody else so you can sneak up on everybody. There's all sorts of different ways where you are encouraged to be creative with the way you approach the game. And the game is is excellent in that regard. It, it makes you feel, makes the combat much deeper than just, okay, run in, swing your sword, shield their attacks, uh, fatal blow, you know? Um... One thing, one criticism I hear other people give the game is they talk about fra the fragile weapons. Of course, in most of the other games, with like a couple exceptions, your weapons never break. You get the weapon, you uh, you can use it the entire game, and and it will never break. Uh, as long as you have ammo or whatever, every single item doesn't break. But in Breath of the Wild, your swords, shields, and bows after X amount of uses, and it's only a few dozen uses, they will break. 
Um, and a lot of people really complained that they weren't allowed to, they couldn't, uh, it, they broke too soon and it kind of broke up the flow of the game and it made it less fun. But to me, um, these fragile weapons really hit on that survival aspect. You know, you have to ration out your weapons as well as, you know, your food. Because if you go in uh, using your strong strong weapons against weak enemies and you break them all, now you're using uh, weak weapons against strong enemies and your the fight's going to last a lot, lot, lot longer and you're going to die sooner. There's a higher likelihood that you will die. I really loved the uh um the the breakable weapons system because it also felt like once you found something it was you know cool it was something to cherish you know use it in the right situation and the right scenario um so yeah breath of the wild all the changes are done not just to be quirky or different but to really uh emphasize this new exploration new survival uh, uh aspect of this game and it's amazing um some other things that you can do you can use a paraglider to glide down from mountaintops you can climb almost anything aside from like the the dungeons in which obviously the the developers wanted to restrict where you can go in that dungeon because you have to figure out how to get up there. You can climb up sheer cliffs. As long as you have enough stamina to get up there, you can climb up there. And that's another great thing about this game. There's lots of places to climb. There's mountains, ruins, towers, all that fun stuff. It opens up a world of possibility. It is a superb open-world exploration game with, with survival elements. Uh, amazing gameplay. Story-wise... Uh, the story is definitely not the main focus of the game. Uh, it rarely is if with Legend of Zelda games. It's just kind of a, a framework to give you puzzles and dungeons and, and, and exploration and all that fun stuff. Um, Link has amnesia, which is kind of cliche, but it does work well because um, the whole story happened 100 years ago. And everything interesting happened in the past. So not only do we not know it, but pretty much everybody doesn't know it. And we get to figure out the story along with Link. There's a really cool um, side quest in where there are pictures on Link's Sheikah Slate. And you have to figure out where in Hyrule they were taken. And you get memories based off of where they were taken um, and what was going on during that time. And the puzzle pieces start falling together of, okay, what exactly happened a hundred years ago? You know, you know generally what happened, but you don't know exactly how it, how it played out. Um, the characters are relatively likable. There's only a few of them that have major roles. There's the four champions, which operate the four divine beasts, which in the past uh, were super weapons that, that they were used to combat the clan began in and mild spoilers, I don't feel too bad talking about this, but during the Calamity, of course, the champions were operating the um, Divine Beasts, and Ganon took them over and killed the champions. And this kind of... You get this kind of weird character part where their ghosts are still in the Divine Beasts, and in each one of the four Divine Beasts, you get a helper to help you board the Divine Beasts so you can take out the enemy holding it hostage. And I thought that they were going to have a second generation of champions, but no, the ghost of the divine beast or of the champion from a hundred years ago just operates the divine beast. So that was, I thought that was kind of strange, but I mean, this that's a nitpick. And honestly, the only thing I can do with this game is, is nitpick. There's no big complaints. Um, another mild nitpick is um, calamity. Ganon is the villain and he doesn't really, I mean, he doesn't have a personality. He's just a, you know, calamity, like pure evil, da 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 wants to destroy everything. It's not really interesting fighting him. But, for one, it seems that uh, Ganondorf may or may not make a an appearance in Breath of the Wild 2. And the other thing is, uh, is that the villain kind of doesn't need to have a personality in this game. Like, half of the villain is just the wild, the nature itself, and navigating that. 
So it's really of no consequence that the main villain isn't like there. It, there's no motivation for the villain other than I just want to destroy everything. Um, the story is probably the weakest part of the game, um, but like it doesn't need to be strong. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's not a game meant to pull you in with a story. Um, next up, the graphics, the art style. Oh my god, beautiful! Uh, I love how. I mean, even though the Switch has not as much uh, processing power as some of the other uh, major, you know, P PlayStation, Xbox, this game still looks gorgeous. Um, the the cell shaded art style combined with all of the natural um, looking uh, sceneries. It, it makes you feel like you're inside, you know, you're, you're in Hyrule. You're, you're immersed in this area. That and, and the, the world gives you a really good um, kind of sense of mystery because it's this world where a hundred years before it was ravaged by the Calamity Ganon. And um, it's now trying to heal. Like Ganon's kind of sealed off, kind of not. But, you know, in spaces you can still see pools of malice, which are like physical manifestations of Ganon. Um, you can still see ruins of towns where, you know, people used to live, but all their houses were destroyed. But at the same time, you can see kind of the healing that's been going on. There's a few villages that manages, manage to survive the destruction. Um, nature has taken over a lot of the different places uh, on the map. Um, and you know, you kind of see this like fight of, okay, it's getting better, but it will never truly be okay until Ganon is killed. And there's also the interesting hints of 10,000 years prior, there was the, uh, the Sheikah had figured out a lot of the different, you know, technological secrets. So there are a bunch of like really, really old ruins and old, uh, evidence of what, what was in the in the way past so it's this really interesting uh hyrule is this really interesting setting of old secrets in the past coming back and being uncovered as well as this you know kind of battle between uh chaos and peace if you will um it and this uh the the setting whether it's in you know snowy mountains, desert, grassland, uh, volcano, uh, seaside, whatever, it gives you this like constant reminder that while things are okay for a bit, you know, right now, they will never be truly okay until the calamity Ganon is destroyed. So the game constantly gives you this motivation and this reminder that you know the biggest thing on the horizon, the most notable thing on the horizon, Hyrule Castle is w there waiting for you to conquer it. Um, Music-wise, again, I'm not a big music guy, but I figured I'd still talk about them. The soundtrack is really interesting in that most of the time, there's not a lot of background music. There's little, you know, maybe a piano riff here and there uh, or, or what have you, but for the most part, you, it's just nature sounds the sounds of uh s squirrels chattering of birds chirping stuff like that so when music does appear it kind of signifies that you're in an important place or you know something noteworthy is happening um in the final battle against calamity ganon the the music is is blaring and it it's a this really good contrast between um like the silence that you're used to and like, Oh, it's the final battle. Like this is it's showtime. This is what everything has been culminating to. Also the music, uh, in a few places kind of signifies how much danger you're in. If a guardian spots you, which is like a really powerful enemy, um, this cacophony of piano starts playing. And then this, you know, dun, 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 like really, uh, stressful music starts playing uh and you know okay i'm in danger if i don't find cover right now if i don't shake this guy i'm gonna get blasted um so and then when the the guardian loses sight of you 
the music fades back into the background. So that's that's cool. Music in this game, I absolutely love it. It's it's very much not a uh, a soundtrack that you would want to necessarily just throw on and listen to with no context. Um, but in the in the context of the game, it works very well. Uh, as a bonus section, I'll talk about the DLC. Uh, they sold like a Master Quest mode and a Champion's Ballad. I mean, the Master Cast Master Quest mode. You can replay the game, and like every all the enemies are harder. Uh, you you take more damage. You know the the, the usual play the game but harder. Um, the Champion's Ballad. There was some extra stories and some extra challenges. There was kind of like a, a run the gauntlet challenge where you go in with no. Um, equipment and you have to like make your way through uh, a, a various sets of challenges um, which is especially challenging in master mode when enemies are healing when you're not uh, wailing on them so that was uh, a nice little touch for the game should you get the DLC well I'll touch on that in my conclusion so overall uh, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is the greatest open world game and, and quite honestly, one of the greatest games, period, that I've ever had the joy to experience. There's there's really no point where there's filler or fluff. There's no pointless collection missions, whatever. It is just a portal into pure gaming bliss. Uh, my, my really, the only complaint that I have with this game, and you can't really call it a complaint, um, is that there isn't more of it. And not that I didn't you know, the game was too short. I sunk over 300 hours into the thing. Um, it's just, if you were to give me more Breath of the Wild, I would absolutely want it. If you were to have a new area to explain, absolutely, you know. Uh, if and, and that's what the DLC did. They said, okay, do you want to play the entire game over? Like, lose 120 hours of progress and try the game again, but with, you know, but harder? And I said, you know what, yeah, I do. I really do. Um, and that's why I would absolutely recommend the DLC as well because it's more Breath of the Wild and more Breath of the Wild is always a good thing. Breath of the Wild is, is an almost perfect game and that's why I am giving it a 10 out of 10 perfect score. Uh, I, I cannot recommend this game enough. Whoever you are, if you have a Switch, if you play video games and you have not played this game, it is absolutely worth it even with the AAA price tag. 10 out of 10, get this game. That's it. All right, so that's my review of Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, I hope everybody uh, has a nice day. Bye.